Hi everyone, this is the Math 30-1 functions review and this is question 11. It says the graph of, and they give you this expression right here with a, with a parameter in it, the c here, has an x-intercept of negative 1. So what we're supposed to do, the rest of the question says, determine the value of c and then the remaining x-intercepts. Well, if it has an x-intercept of negative 1, we know that the point negative 1, 0 must be on that, that uh, graph there, the graph of that function, that cubic. So I should be able to plug that in. So I know that the y-coordinate goes to 0 when x is negative 1. Now that's going to end up being minus c, minus 4. So what we got here, this will be negative 1, and this will be plus 1. Those guys will cancel. And if I bring the c over, well, I get really quite quickly, c is equal to negative 4. Okay, good. Now, I also know that there's an x-intercept of negative 1. I know that if, if I set this function equal to 0, okay, if I set this equal to 0 right now, so I get x cubed uh, plus x squared minus 4x minus 4, okay, I know... That, uh, that this has got an x-intercept of, uh, of negative 1 here. Now, actually, I was going to use that um, and use the, the factor theorem here. But when I look at this expression, actually, I, I got another plan here. I notice I've got four terms here. Um, although I could use the factor theorem, that, that would work just fine here. Another thing that I could do here to get my other x-intercepts, which, which, by the way, is the same as finding the other roots of the equation, I can do grouping. I'm going to group the first two terms together, okay, with parentheses. I'm going to put a plus sign here, and I'm going to group the, the last two terms together as well. Now, notice what I'm doing here, being very deliberate about this. I'm moving the negative over with this term right here and putting a plus sign in between when I do grouping. If, if I'm lazy about this and just drop a parentheses there, I will might inadvertently factor out the negative without intending to do that, okay, or being deliberate about it. By putting the plus sign in between, okay, and moving that negative over, I'm being very deliberate, and hopefully I will avoid a, a fairly predictable mistake. Um, notice I've got a common x squared to the two terms in that first term there, so this is going to leave me with an x plus 1. And here, there's a common negative 4 I can take out, which will leave me with an x plus 1 inside there. Between the two terms, I have got a common factor of x plus 1, and that leaves me with x squared minus 4. And I'm very pleased that I've, I've got that. However, I'm not quite done yet. I should notice right away that that's a difference of squares. Okay, however, notice that the, that, that x-intercept, they told me that there was an x-intercept of negative 1, that factor popped out. Okay, I knew that, that, that there had to be a factor of x plus 1 in there, and that's, that's ultimately what I was going to do initially, because I thought I was going to use the factor theorem. But grouping here works, works great. But this is a difference of squares. And so I can take this one step further and make this x plus 1 times x minus 2, x plus 2. Okay, just taking the square root of the, the first and second terms here and then writing out the binomial conjugates. And this gets us that we, the x-intercepts would be negative 1, I already knew that, but they're also going to be positive 2 and negative 2 coming from those other two uh, factors that we just found. 